This was the main attraction located inside of the main Hogwarts castle, which is pretty much like the Harry Potter's Wizarding World, like Cinderella's castle is the Disney World in Disneyland. So yeah, you can't miss this building, and that's what's inside of it. The pre-show is great, the dark atmosphere, and, well, it's not completely a simulator. There are some practical effects, like with the big dragon, the spiders, but most of the time you're moving in front of different IMAX screens. Almost like Transformers and Spider-Man, except they strap you down over your shoulders because you do move around kind of like a roller coaster, sort of. Yeah. And you get a photo on it, too, as well. Yeah, there I am. Only at the one in Florida, unfortunately. Hollywood's version, unfortunately, doesn't do that. But in Hollywood's version, they make you wear the 3D glasses, as opposed to Florida's version, where they don't. But it is amazing, and it can make you a bit queasy. Yeah. Making you feel like you're flying with Harry Potter. Just... It's magical right there. I mean, Harry Potter magic at its finest. One of the best. So, yeah, as I said with the Universal Orlando attractions, I also reviewed most of these attractions, and this one is probably the best. Trust me, it has the real feel and magic of Harry Potter. Number two, Soaring. Yes, Epcot's version, obviously. I haven't been to California's park, and I know that's where the first Soaring attraction came from, and it did start out as a completely different ride. In fact, these rides went through some major changes over the years. This one obviously used to be soaring over California because that's obviously where it started, and Epcot's version adapted that idea and then changed it to around the world, and then California's version did too as well. There also exist different versions of this attraction at Tokyo Disney and Shanghai Disneyland as well, but nothing in Paris's park, unfortunately. But anyway, all I can say is this attraction was amazing. Just watch my review, as I said before. I know I'm sounding like a broken record on this, but I can't say much more on how incredible this attraction is. If you ever go to Epcot, you cannot miss this one. Get a fast pass. It is amazing. I mean, the attention to detailing on how this attraction pans out, how it makes you feel like you're soaring on different parts of the world is incredible. I mean, from the jungle to the waterfalls to over the ocean, it's just incredible. And the it, way it lifts the seats up to put you in front, making it feel like you're really soaring. It just goes the extra mile to give that presentation like you're really there. And the smells that it emits, like from the animals and all the different environments, man, you can't miss that kind of stuff. And the music that goes along with it, it's just perfectly fitting. Can't say much more there. Do this attraction. It absolutely cannot be missed at Epcot. So, enough said right there. Anyway, before I get to number one, few honorable mentions. Harry Potter and Escape from Gringotts. Yes, I gotta include this one. Even though it's mostly a roller coaster, it does have a few parts that are a simulator. You know, you got 3D screen stuff, and it's obviously located only at Florida's Park in the Diagon Alley expansion, which overtook Jaws. I was sad to see that attraction go, and yeah, I was kind of scratching my head on this, but it's not a bad attraction. The big dragon statue in the front of the, on top of the building is pretty damn cool, and well, this attraction has a pretty cool design, even when you first walk in with the goblins inside the bank, and it was just amazing. Not as good as Forbidden Journey, but I would give it a shot. It's pretty fun. Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast. Yes, as I mentioned with Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera, this is what replaced it. Well, before it ended up on the chop block. And, as you know, I'm a diehard Nickelodeon fan, and I grew up in the 90s and watched all these classic cartoons like Rugrats, Hey Arnold, and even the Fairly Odd Parents, even though that came more around the 2000s, but, and even SpongeBob. Despite the fact that show has kind of lost its luster over the years, I think most people can agree. But, it was a fun, ambitious attraction. I liked it. Yeah, it even made some people kind of queasy for the most part. It was sad to see it go, and most of these Nickelodeon TV shows go, even though some of them are still on and aren't quite what they used to be. But, it was great. At least I thought it was. Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. Yes, this is what replaced it, and, well, of course, over in Hollywood's park, it replaced Terminator 2 3D, which, well, as we know, closed in Florida's park. No word yet on what's replacing that. But, yeah, I kind of like this attraction. I mean, the Minion movies are fun to watch, and I know this was kind of a mixed bag with most fans, but I think it's pretty fun. At least good for kids. It's good harmless humor, and the banana scent that it emits in the air. And, well, 
May not be the best, but it's worth checking out. I know the lines can get pretty lengthy for it, but give it one shot. What do you got to lose? Reign of Kong Skull Island, based off the 2005 Peter Jackson remake King Kong, located at Island's Adventure. An arguable choice I can understand, and some people enjoyed it while others were disappointed because it's mostly 3D screens. Okay, I get it. It's... Yeah, it obviously is inspired by the tram set part of the King Kong 360 3D, which is completely 3D screens, and I thought that was decent. You know, it was a little hyped up for the most part, considering how short it was, and how this takes a piece of that and makes it pretty much the climactic part of the ride, and, well, a couple other 3D screen parts of the ride before that, and, well, yeah, I understand. It's mostly 3D screens, and it's annoying. But is it really the worst? No. That's why at least it deserves a spot at it honorable mention, you know, come on. I mean, yeah, you know, it's annoying having to look back and forth, you know, and everything like that, but it does have some pretty cool effects, like when you wait online, there's some pretty cool animatronics, and it's dark and scary, just like the Skull Island in the movie itself, and it's pretty cool. I love the smell of it and everything like that. You got the torches and the music that plays when you're on the safari ride, and the big gates open up, and you got the animatronic bats, and even the skeletons. And okay, yes, the rest of it's mostly 3D screens. But you got some cool stuff considering you have to wear the 3D glasses, which I know Universal's gotten really crazy with this idea of having to wear 3D glasses. But, you know, you got like the water that spits at you and stuff that feels like it comes right in your face with all the bats and the giant insects and stuff like that. You know, one part you're in the cave and in the part you're on the bug pit at the bottom and the tram rocks up and down because it's like you're in the mud at the bottom of it and then of course the last part as i mentioned before is basically taken right out of the one over universal studios hollywood from the set tour but with some differences as opposed to a tram from the studio tram it's a safari vehicle and they did add some cool effects as opposed to the tram or i should say the safari vehicle rocking back and forth you got some pretty cool stuff like when the dinosaurs come in your face yeah, I know, again, it's just a 3D projection screen as well as Kong, but when they breathe on you and everything, you feel the air blowing at you and all the water coming at you again, and it's kind of cool for the most part. So, may not be the best, and it's definitely not anywhere near as good as the original confrontation or King Kong encounter that was sadly lost in a fire at Universal Studios Hollywood, but give them credit, it's got something going for it and you got the animatronic Kong at the end so yeah they could have had a lot more of that but come on it's definitely way better than Fast and Furious Supercharged I'm sure anybody can agree with that it's got the atmosphere it's got some cool stuff if you don't like it that's fine but I think it was pretty good and the number one best simulator attraction is it's just my opinion people and I think most of you probably saw this one coming Avatar Flight of Passage, yes. Based off the James Cameron hit epic movie, which some of you may call a bit overrated. You know, CG, plot not being the most original, you know, we've probably seen this before with Dances with Wolves, Pocahontas, and so forth. But man, this Avatar Pandora section at Disney's Animal Kingdom was amazing. I mean, wow. The floating islands the design to it. I sadly didn't get to see it at nighttime, but I heard it glows in the dark, and that would have been incredible. But, man, I was just blown away by this. And this attraction is the best. I mean, you can't go here without going on this attraction, unless you can't take simulators. I mean, this one, compared to Soaring, it's like Soaring on steroids. Yes, I already reviewed this attraction, I'll say that again, but I'll say it again right now. This one is incredible. Yes, the lines, even to today, can get pretty damn long, even during slow season. So this is a fast pass ride for sure. Unless you want to miss out on this awesome queue line when you get past the outside part, when you get through the caves, when it glows, and then you get inside, it makes you look like you're in the lab from the movie with all the stuff in the film, like the avatar inside the tube. I mean, the attention to detailing on the queue line is amazing. You get a pretty cool pre-show that tells you all about the attraction, and then the attraction itself, I was lost for words of how incredible it was. I mean, yeah, it can be pretty rough, and it can be a bit nauseating for people that can't handle these type of attractions, but damn. 
I was lost for words of how incredible it was. Yeah, of course, most people may not be able to fit in this type of thing because you have to ride this thing like you're on a banshee in the film, but hey, they just want to make it feel like you're really there on the banshee birds, like you're flying, and that's what it really feels like. I mean, I had no comments on how incredible it was. I mean, it just took my breath away of how amazing the soundtrack, the smells that it emits in the air when you're flying. I mean, the only sucky part was when it was over. I wanted to ride again. It was that great. But, well, I didn't want to wait in a long-ass line again. But all I could say is it was well worth it, even after a two-hour wait, which, even though it said four hours, but it only ended up being two, and the line can actually move pretty fast for the most part. So, enjoy it while you can if you ever go to Animal Kingdom, and you're a thrill seeker who loves simulators. Well, this one, in my opinion, is the best, and that's why it's at number one spot right there. So, that's my top ten list of what I think the best simulators rides are. Comment, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to, but please refrain from leaving any uh, negative, especially uh, obscene comments on this one. This is just my opinion right there, as I said before. So, until next time, keep watching.